So I have my column set up. I, the first row is going to be associated with the joints in my structure. The, the next row are my end moment labels and then my distribution factors. And the next thing I want to do is calculate my fixed end moments. This is our first lock. So to calculate fixed end moments, normally we're going to use a model of the structure that we can find from a textbook or the internet. The situation is though, the ends of each member are fixed and what would the moments be associated with the ends of each of these members in the case that all the joints are fixed. For the fixed end moments in this problem, I'm going to use three different models. And the reason is because of the boundary conditions associated at each of the joints. For member BC, I can look at this as a fixed fixed beam. For member CD, I can look at it as a fixed fixed beam. But here, joint A is free, so I can, I'm can i going to look at member AB as joint A is pinned and joint B is fixed when I look at the fixed end moment model. And that'll tell me that the fixed end moment AB is equal to zero as well. So here are the three models I'm going to use. For member AB, I have a beam with one end fixed, the other with a roller support and a load applied at mid-span. And if I look at usually the inside cover of a textbook or somewhere on the internet, this will tell me that this moment here, this end moment, is 3PL over 16. For member BC, it's going to be a fixed, fixed beam with a concentrated load applied at mid-span. And member CD will be a fixed, fixed beam with a linearly distributed load. So using those models, I can determine my fixed end moments. And so my fixed end moment for AB is equal to zero. Fixed end moment for BA is 18.75 kip feet. And it's positive because this 3PL over 16 is going clockwise, which matches the it, this MBA here. And I can go through and repeat the process for the other members. So FEMBC. So here are my fixed end moments. Now I'm just going to put them back in the table. And now I'm ready to unlock, which means that I want to calculate my balancing moment that I need to have equilibrium at each joint and distribute according to the distribution factor into each of the end moments. So there, obviously at joint A, there is no balancing moment that's needed, so that's zero. At joint B, I have this 18.75 and negative 12.5, which means I need a negative 6.25 kip feet to balance joint B. For joint C, I need a positive 10 kip feet to balance joint C. And then here for joint D, I would need a negative 33.75, but that distribution factor is zero, so that's really trivial. And now that I have my balancing moments, I have I'm going to distribute. And again, here the distribution factor is 1, but the fixed end moment is 0, so this is just 0. I'm going to distribute 0.27 or 27% of 6.25 into uh, end moment BA, which is minus 1.69. And then the remainder of it will go into end moment BC. And then here, this is going to be 75% of the 10 kip feet. And obviously, this will be 0. And I have completed my first round of popping and locking. And now I'm ready to carry over. And one thing I like to do is maybe sometimes, at least on the first row, is, is write what my carryover factors are from one end moment to the other within a member. So from BA to AB, I remember that was 0. From BC to CB, this was half. From CB to BC was 1 half. And from CD to DC was one half. And I also like to include arrows on where I am actually going to carry over. Excellent. And now I go ahead and start that process. So there's no carry zero there. Uh, let's see. I've got this nothing carried over to this spot. 7.5, half of that carried over here. So this is plus 3.75. Uh, half of negative 4.56, negative 2.28 and 0, and then half of 2.5, which is plus 1.25. That is my second lock. And now I want to pop or distribute again. And that requires determining the appropriate balancing moment. And so I'm going to repeat that same process. And I'll just go ahead, and you can see what I do below here. All right, so now I think that my carryovers and my distributions have become small enough that I, I can add up the columns. One thing to make sure you don't do is do not stop on a carryover. All right, otherwise, you'll end up summing the columns and get a mismatch in moments, and you'll feel a little unsure, and, you, and 
you'll question your process, which is wrong. <laughs> so here, let's go ahead and sum up the columns. So when I go ahead and I sum up the columns, I will get that the end moment AB is zero. For BA, the sum of this column, I will get positive 15.65. Here, negative 15.65 plus 18.96 minus 18.96 and positive 35.5. These are my end moments which will go into this drawing over here. And just in summary, I'll take this drawing and I'll, and I'll put the end moments with the magnitudes and correct orientations drawn in. So here are my end moments and notice anything that was a positive value, I, drew, I wrote the magnitude and the direction as going clockwise. And anything that was a negative value for the moment, I drew with the magnitude and the direction going counterclockwise. And now if I go through and I introduce them to my members over here, this is what the end moments look like inside the beams. And here are my end moments. Notice there is no end moment at end AB here. So with these end moments known, you can draw in the end shears and use equilibrium equations to calculate what those end shears are and then draw shear moment diagrams. All right, so hopefully this was helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or preferably if you're still watching on my Facebook or Google Plus page. It's easier for me there. All right, hope you're doing well. Take it easy. See ya.